Hello Internet, uh, Doug Redmond here, and I'm with Michael Foster, who is the engineering lead on the VDF, and I've asked him to come and show us the um, select entity dialog in the VDF, um, and, and uh, the grid control that's inside of it as well. So uh, take it from here, Michael. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Doug said, this is my name is Michael Foster, and we're going to show you a brand new component in the VDF that is available for everybody to use, and it's the select entity. And it's not called the select file dialog because it can be used uh, to select more things than just files. It can be used to select items or folders or custom objects or change orders um, or anything like that. And we're only going to show you a little bit of code, and then we're going to focus on the features. But um, we're going to start here by showing you exactly um, how to invoke this dialog. And with most VDF workflows, they require two steps. Step one is you create a settings object. And he here you're going to um, create the select entity settings. And you can, and then, and then you call the action. Here we're calling the, uh, the library method select entity, which takes a connection and the settings. Um, now, for the settings objects, there's all sorts of things you can configure on it, as with all of our workflows. Um, it can be single or multiple select. You can tell it um, whether or not you want to work on files or items. Um, you can change the caption. Um, all sorts of filters and configuration that you can do. We're not going to focus on that today, um, but the lesson that you should take out of today is to play with the properties on the settings. They all have help and IntelliSense, and so you can see what they do. And that's how you'll get at a lot of the customizations um, if you want to change the out-of-the-box functionality. So now let's launch the product and take a look at what this dialog does and some of its features. So first you got to log in. Here's a little sample app, and we're going to bring up the select entity dialog, which is really just executing those two lines of code. Okay, so there's a few components in this dialog. Um, the look-in component, it starts you off at the root of the vault, and as you navigate, um, it sort of follows um, your path down here. So it's kind of like a breadcrumb, and you can use it to go back to any place that you, vis you visited along the way. Um, you can also use uh, this back button, which kind of um, works like an HTML browser. It takes you back to the place where you just were. Um, so then you have your content view, which is a standard um, grid, which has columns uh, that you can configure. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, this is the name of the, uh, the selection. And it supports a really neat, let me see if we have data. Um, let me see if we have data set up. OK, so if I start typing in here, I'm going to start typing the word catch. And you can see, um, as I was typing, it found all of the files that matched that pattern, uh, kind of like Microsoft Office does. And then it's a really quick shortcut to get to the one you want. Um, and then, of course, once you have a file selected, you could pick which revision of that file you want. So at a high level, those are the features. Um, now let's drill down a little bit into the grid control. This grid control can be used by itself outside of this dialog. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because when you're launching the dialog, you're launching a self-contained workflow. And when you're using this control, um, it's a standard .NET control that has events and properties. And it's a little bit more involved um, to use. But nonetheless, it's very powerful. One of the features that it has is customizable columns. So you can pick from all of the available columns. Right now it's showing you every column in the vault, but you can configure it to be whatever columns you'd like. It could be all of the columns, uh, all of the file properties only, or it can really just be a subset of five or six columns that are of interest to you. You can double click on the column to add it, um, or you could drag and drop um, to add it as well. And here we sort of give you a little filter you can look at just the file properties, just the folder properties, whatever you want. And of course, while you're in the dialog, you can reorder the columns, or you can sort of just drag a column into the white space to remove it. At any time, you can get back to where you were, 
just through the context menu by clicking on reset and it will take you back to the default configuration. Um, now another thing that is new um, to the grids in the VDF that you might not have seen in Vault before is this notion called the quick list. And the quick list has really replaced um, the old feature called frequently used fields um, where we tried to predict which um, properties were the ones you used the most and that, that was really hard for us to predict. And so what this does is we configure this out of the box with these being the most popular columns and you can click on the quick list and you can really easily turn one off, um, turn a column on and here I can turn it back on. Um, and the other thing you can do is you could modify what's in the quick list. So I can for example take this category name column and I can say I want to add the category name to the quick list. So now wherever I am I've got one click access to category name where I can turn it on or off. And you could also remove, you can say, you know, I don't ever use a comment field, so I want to remove that from the quick list. Um, so that gives you, that lets you create your own frequently used fields um, based on the properties you use most often, not based on patterns that Vault tried to predict. Uh, so that's a new feature that people are really liking. Um, standard features of all of your grids, nothing's really changed here, is you have all of your filters um, where you can... Um, here I could filter. I want to see all rows that have uh, comments. All right, and then you could um, clear your filters as well. Um, now, one thing we want to show you is this thumbnail view. Um, we used we've always had support for thumbnails in the grid, but um, for a variety of reasons, people wouldn't use them. Um, they were slow. Um, it took us a long time to retrieve them, and it really brought the grid to a halt. That's no longer the case. Um, the thumbnails are much faster. In fact, we don't even retrieve all of them. We only retrieve the thumbnails that are in your view. And as you scroll down, let's see if we can find a folder with some more data in it. Uh, I'm just going to browse here. Okay, so you see this loaded really quick with the thumbnails, um, but as I scroll down, um, it's actually going so fast it's hard to tell, but it's retrieving these thumbnails on the fly, um, like one page worth, which in this case is about five of them at a time. Um, so it really happens transparently to you, and it doesn't bog down the GUI, and it gives you a nice view to look at. Um, these thumbnails can be, um, can be made bigger. You can either drag and drop the column, or if you hold the control key down and you use the, the, uh, the scroll um, thing on your mouse, you can just go up and down and make it bigger and smaller. Um, so it's become quite useful. We, we see a lot of people using thumbnails now where they did not in the past. Um, in fact, people like the thumbnails so much that we've created some new views. Um, so here you can have an icon view where you really see thumbnails only. Um, and we've got a couple of different sizes. We've got small icons, medium icons, and large icons. And again, you can use the, um, the control key and the scroll wheel on the mouse to make these things um, bigger and smaller. So you're gonna, we're going to start seeing a lot of people uh, use their thumbnail views. Um, sometimes it's more the picture is more interesting than the words. Um, okay, let's get back to details view. Um, now another thing that you can do in these grids is um, I sh we showed you that you have access to all of the vault properties, um, but you could also create some properties of your own, or you can create common styles for properties. So let's add here the file size property. Okay, now the file size property is a number, and normally when we uh, display numbers in the grid, it's just going to show you, like this one would show you 54,000, but you can see there's a custom formatting rule uh, created for this column, and it's painting, every time you paint file size, it's going to paint it in terms of kilobytes or megabytes, or it's going to give you a small, compact representation instead of a, a big, large number that's hard to read. Um, this was done by, like you said, you could write a style for a property that controls 
the text and how the text displays itself so you can write a custom formatter and you can apply that formatter either globally um, like we did in this case so every time we display file size in the product it's going to display it using these formatting rules or you can write it uh, just for this dialogue like if it's very specific to a particular workflow um, then you wouldn't want to do a, a global configuration other things that you can do which um, I can't easily show you in this demo because it's um, there's some extensibility we provide you and you could color encode this so you could write a rule either on a particular property or you can write a rule on the entire row for example I could write a rule that says if file size is greater than uh, one gigabyte then text color equals red um, and you can control the text color the background color the font various things like that and in that case just the individual cell would get painted um, with that style you could also write um, a style for an entire row for example you can say if this file is checked out to another user I want um, the font to be a strike through font or I want the color to be blue um, and that would affect the entire row um, so that's uh, some examples of customizations uh, that are very useful um, also customizations that you can do is you can't see it here but you can completely extend um, on the left area here from top to bottom you can inject a sidebar and in that sidebar you can put your own buttons your own widgets um, so that you can customize this thing to have your own controls and your sidebar control will get notified every time we have a selection change so that you could um, for example you might put a big thumbnail image in the sidebar or um, a list of all the selected files and maybe some statistics um, on those files. Um, Inventor created a sidebar control where they actually um, implemented a federated search. Um, so there's a um, whole variety of things that you can do with that. We also let you put a button right down here on the left hand side so some people like to put um, little configuration widgets or additional settings. Um, other configuration that you could do is this this open button you could obviously change the text you can make it open you can make it save you can have to say whatever you want and you could also um, create a drop down menu which would be the uh, variety of options like open open read only um, it's completely customizable you can control what those options are um, and that Perfect. Awesome. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, at the, and that's just kind of a taste, right? I mean, you you, you alluded to a bunch of stuff uh, that can be done, uh, and pretty much everything you said uh, can be its own blog post in the future. Um, yes, especially the extensibility items. Um, there's all sorts of cre creative ways to extend this thing, and those would be excellent topics, especially the, uh, the, the color encoding stuff. People can be very creative with that and those would be good future um, blog posts for sure. Awesome. So thanks a lot for your time. And uh, you guys listening out there, uh, enjoy. Play around with it. Have fun. Let us know what you think.